الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So we're gonna quickly, very in a very brief way, so you guys can get a better understanding of of a surah that you read often, inshallah taala, surah al kafirun. You know the 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 chapter of the believe disbelievers is the 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 chapter of the disbelievers. So read for me, Abdurrahim, the Surah Al Kafirun. chapter of the disbelievers it begins as most of the surahs in the Quran begin with in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the surah and says say O you disbelievers I worship not that which you worship nor will you worship that which I worship and I shall not worship that which you are worshiping, nor will you worship that which I worship. To you be your religion, and to me be my religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this surah, in this chapter, uh, to address the disbelievers in this fashion, telling them that uh, he, the Prophet ﷺ, would not worship the idols of the disbelievers. The disbelievers, they worship uh, idols. In uh, At that time, the Kaaba, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when Islam came uh, to the Quraysh, to the, 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 the tribes there, there was a lot of idols in the Kaaba. There was like 360 idols. The idols were like statues, things that they worshipped. They, they consider them gods, little little statues, because they believe that those statues would bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That by worshipping those statues, that this would help them come closer to Allah. But we know that's false, that's shirk. You know, you cannot worship anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah commanded the Prophet sallam to free himself from that shirk from that polytheistic belief and stay away from the belief of the idolaters of Mecca and this is in general for us to stay away from all any and all forms of idolatry we don't worship anything or anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the the pagans of the Quraysh they had uh, requested the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to worship their gods, to take a year and worship their their gods. And then the next year they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they wanted to make an agreement with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never compromised Islam. He never said no, okay, that's good just for the sake of a peace treaty, or that's okay, I don't want to cause too much disruption in my society. He didn't do that. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instead he stood firm on the monotheistic belief of Islam. That was his his purpose. His purpose was to spread Islam, to spread Tawheed, not to compromise and just get along, just for the sake of getting along, even 
at the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. The Prophet sallallahu he held fast to Islam and to the Islamic belief of the wor the worship of Allah alone. So the, the pagans, they wanted to take time. They wanted to, you know, trade years. One year you worship uh, you worship our gods, the next year we'll worship your god. This is what the, the, the pagan Arabs, what they said to the Prophet Wasallam. You understand that, Abdurrahman? Good. And so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah. He revealed this verse to put a stop to the, uh, to the, this ambition or this, this calling that the disbelievers wanted. They wanted to trade and take turns in worshiping, you worship my God, I worship your God one day. They wanted to, sh to the Prophet to, to make shirk. But the Prophet refused, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse in order to seal for them, to, to show them and show the Prophet to make it clear that shirk was unacceptable, that there's no way he could compromise, and, and the people of faith cannot compromise their faith by worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is in general uh, what a very brief background of behind that surah. And some of the things we can gain from this surah, you know, some of the benefits from this verse, these verses. Number one, that belief in, um, you know, the Qadr, belief in the divine destiny is established for the believer and the disbeliever in the surah, you know, that, uh, and that the day of judgment is also affirmed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, says, uh, or, or that Allah, you know, challenges the disbelievers and shows that, uh, that only one religion is acceptable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Prophet sallam, from compromising and accepting any forms of evil. Also, this shows us that there's a distinction between faith and disbelief. There's a, there's a, a fine um, division. There's a big division from shirk and kufr. Iman wa kufr. They don't, they don't uh, cooperate together. That when you have disbelief, and you have belief, you cannot compromise that. You can't do, you can't uh, do an act of shirk to please anyone. And that, that's an example for us that we can never compromise our religion. And at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ And for you, be your religion, and for me, mine. So if you're in a situation where someone is arguing with you, they want to argue, they want to debate, and you see that there's no benefit in debating with them, then it's better to leave it and just say, hey, to you be your religion and me to be and me my religion, my way. I'm not going to argue with you. I, instead, I'm going to invite you and to invite you to learn more about Islam and, and, and about uh, faith. And if you choose to, to learn more, alhamdulillah, that's for your benefit. And if you choose to, to not listen, then that, that's uh, your choice, and your reckoning will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a very, very brief and general meaning uh, about the surah. So it's good to know, it's always good to know the explanation, very, even if it's a basic explanation behind the surahs that we read all the time. You know, we don't want to just memorize the Quran, and we don't think about it and reflect. You know, we want to tadabbar al-Quran, we want to... Uh, reflect and think about those verses and practice. We have to think about them and practice those verses. So, I just wanted to share that with you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us with good and anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that I said that was a mistake was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.